Oof, is it 12 already? Today we're gonna talk about nothing. Not like nothing, nothing, but nothing, nothing. You know, the nothing that nothings. <laughs> My brain is refusing to work. Luckily, I prepared some rare footage of Heidegger's inaugural speech, so you can check that out when I try to wake up. Was ist Metaphysik? Das Nichts wird preisgegeben in der Wissenschaft. Wissenschaft den Sein, den Nichts damit nicht zu? Ist dem so, dann steht fest, die Wissenschaft will vom Nichts nicht wissen. Somit wird das Nichts von ihr preisgegeben und auch zugegeben. Ist das so, gibt die Nichtigkeit unseres Daseins selbst zu und sie im entscheidenden Moment selbst wieder preisgegeben. Also, wie steht es mit dem Nichts? In 1932, Carnap wrote a paper in which he attacked Heidegger's philosophy as being a bunch of nonsense, which all metaphysics is, ultimately. Usually, philosophers attack metaphysical claims as being at best uncertain because they reach beyond human perceptions and then some philosophers argued about some metaphysical claims being false. Carnap didn't want to say that they are false, he wanted to say that they are not even false, they are just nonsense, they have, they are meaningless, it's nothing, it's crazy talk. Pseudo statements as he called them, empty phrases that break logical syntax. I mean, you can say things like the rain rains, okay, but nothing nothings. I mean, when Karnak heard that, he was like, what? Like, his head was having a, you know, his bullshit receptors went like, you know. A further example of nonsense would be Caesar is a prime number. At least Karnak thought it's nonsense. Or is it false? Discussed down below. Karnap invites us to think of a person that introduces us to a new word called Tuvi. He contends that there are some things that are Tuvi and that there are some things that are not Tuvi. So we would probably ask that person to define what makes a thing Tuvi. And ultimately we would like that person to point to a visible feature of a thing that makes it Tuvi. Let's say that gradually we can make out that the person means chair with the word Tui. Now, Karnap would just say, okay, so Tui is synonymous to chair. That's it. But if the person would contend that no, 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 actually I mean something else with Tui, it's something deeper, you know, then Karnap would be just like, bitch, I don't care about your private association, it means chair. Sometimes philosophers talk like, yeah, I see a tree, so there is a tree, but also I feel like there's something else, you know, and then Karnap would be like, bitch, shut the fuck up, it's a tree! Karnap basically wanted all of our words to be... What? What? Meme break! Okay, that is Karnap reading Heidegger. This is me. Lesson number three. Say the word nothing. nothing. As much as possible, even if it doesn't make sense. Your eyes, they're like... Nothing. On fire. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is Quine Boy, who we will talk about next episode. Now, Karna basically wanted all of our words to be traceable back to immediate perception of the world. 
Now remember last time we talked about Ludwig Wittgenstein and how he imagined ideal language to be analyzable to the simplest elements of reality. Now Karnav wanted language to be analyzable to the simplest parts of our immediate perception of the world. Karnav asks us how we would explain the meaning of the word arthropos, for example. Probably we would explain it by saying that something is that when it's an animal, it has like segmented parts of its body and jointed feet or something like that. The point is we would analyze the word arthropos into like different parts that are observable about that things. This analysis should ultimately lead us to descriptions like black, round, small, you know, the simplest elements given in our immediate perception that we can imagine. And once we would do that, uh, trace all of the words in our language to like something in our immediate perception, then we would achieve ultimate or absolute preciseness with our words and our experience of the world would be directly translatable to other people, to other people and vice versa. On the other side you have philosophers like Martin Heidegger who constructed sentences like nothing nothings. Karnap tried to analyze those sentences into the ideal language to show that it's actually impossible to do that and hence Heidegger just talks a bunch of nonsense. Here we have the subject nothing, which, okay, but the verb to nothing, that's where, you know, Karnap loses it. It's like, what? <laughs> Karnap simply fails to think of any way of how we could translate that into an ideal language, and he takes that as proof that, indeed, it's nonsense. Philosophers should start from the epistemological certainty of immediate perception and then construct a scientifically rigid and systematic vocabulary about, around it. With it, we give the essential tools to science, which can start to investigate the world, while philosophers just root out linguistic confusion that would occasionally you know, it would occasionally appear in scientific claims about the world. But other than that, the job of philosophy is basically done. Now, Karnap wants to exile metaphysics from philosophy because it's not really philosophy, he thought. Because metaphysicians, metaphysicians don't really make claims about the world, but they just kind of express a feeling about the world in the same way that artists do. And yeah, metaphysics is not philosophy, it's art, Karnap said. And for example, Nietzsche became self-aware about this when he wrote his two spokes Zarathustra, where he didn't pretend in his style to write a scientific matter because it's not a paper really but it's just prose it's art so today we learned that philosophy is done and there's really nothing to say about it here anymore so this is the end of the series except it's not and next time we will look at quine who absolutely destroyed my boy carnap absolutely <laughs> destroyed There was a boy named Karnap living next to me Was real concerned about Heidegger's weird philosophy Wanted metaphysics to get lost <laughs> so with the analysis of language she could give the most to Science, science, it investigates the world that we live in Science, science, it is the best, not like the rest of philosophy Karnap!